Hi, this is the fourth video in a series on common Lisp. We are looking at how to write imperative code in Lisp. We have already talked about variable and branching. Moreover, in the meantime, we have shown how to deal with input in common Lisp. The next step is writing some loops. The main loops type in Lisp are loop, do, do time and do list. Loop deserves a video for its own. We will talk about do list after looking at list. It remains do times and do. Let's start with the easiest one, do times. With do times, we can repeat an operation an exact number of times. This is commonly implemented in other languages using for loops. Let's write a program that reads n numbers and sum all of them. First of all, we need a function to read a number from the screen. We define the function read number. The first line write a string on the screen, then we ensure that uh, the string is really shown, and finally we read a string and convert it to an integer. Then we start a function that actually asks the number and sum them. It takes as a parameter how many numbers we want to sum and we need to set a variable to zero. This variable will contain the total that we have summed. We have already seen let, it lets us introduce local variables. Now we need to repeat a fixed number of times the read number function. We can use do times. It takes as uh, parameters a list in which there is a variable name and a limit which specify how many times we want to repeat uh, the body of this loop, in our case n. The counter will go from 0 to n minus 1, which means looping exactly n times. In particular, we will have to assign to total the sum of total with read number. Finally, we can try to output the result. Let's try it. Oh, a typo. Let's try it again. We forgot to return the value. Immediately after the do times, we have to return total. And we can see that now it works. We know that in Lisp 
every expression returns a value. Let's look at the value returned by two times. We can print it. It returned nil, but we can control it. Next to the variable name and the limit, we can set the return value of the loop. For example, we want it to return total. So I can remove the print C and the value that I returned immediately after the loop. This way, the value returned by the function is exactly what the times returns. And we can see that it still works. In this case, the two approach using total directly as a return value or putting it as return value of the times is the same. It may be useful if the results depend on the i and we wouldn't have access to it outside the loop. And that's basically it for the times. Useful for a specific task, but if you need a more complex loop, you have to look somewhere else. For example, at do, which is the most complete form of looping inside Lisp, but also the most complex. Let's try to rewrite the same program using do. So instead of do times, we use do. First of all, do takes a list of variable declaration and how to increment them at each step. So we just want to declare the variable i, which is zero, at the beginning and it can be incremented using the plus. Then we have to specify the condition that makes us exit. In this case when we reach n next to the condition we can tell Lisp the return value just as we did with do times. Pay attention to the nested list. We could have multiple declaration and in the return value the condition is the first element in a list. Let's run this version of the example. And we can see that we obtain the same result. And that's it. We have rewritten our do time using only a do. One may wonder why do times exist if it can be written so simply using a more complex form of looping. The reason is that when you use do times, you are helping who will read the code after you, being more clear on what you want to do. Now let's change the exercise. We want to sum numbers as long as the user doesn't write the number zero. So we don't know at the beginning how many times we will have to loop. Thus we can't use the time. But uh, we have a more specific condition, which is an input that the user will supply. This time we could use the i as the number received by the user and so we sum directly i and uh, we initialize i using read number but read number is also the way to read the next value for i Finally, we will end the loop as soon as i 
is the value provided by the user. Otherwise, we go on summing. Let's try this version. And we can see that it works. The do loop is tricky at the beginning. One is just to get used to it. For today, we have finished again. See you in the next video.